Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Um, just a little background on my company. We offer creative marketing, so that is brand strategy, graphic design, video production, and interactive development. So hence, I think, why I was invited to talk about collateral today. But before any one of us talks about what goes into branding, we need to cover what is branding and why is it important. So with that in mind, um, branding basically is the marketing practice of creating a name, a symbol, or design that identifies one seller's goods or services as distinct from someone else's. It's also a promise to your customer. Uh, it tells them what to expect from your products and service, and it defines who you are, what you want to be, and how people perceive you. Little uh, comedic interjection here. I thought that was funny with Pizza Hut, because guess what their promise is? <laughs> they have pizza. Thank you. So why is branding important? There's several reasons, but first and foremost, it does improve recognition. Part of your brand is, is your logo. And if you use it everywhere and it was professionally designed, it should, should have some memorability. So think about the recognition that's out there, that logos you see every day. Um, in fact, in the room, someone shout out a logo that they can recognize right away when they McDonald's. see it. McDonald's, ding, 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 what else? Starbucks, Starbucks. awesome. Google, Nike, Coke, everything, it immediately recognizes you with the brand. Um, number two, branding is also important because it creates trust. Are you going to do business with a company that has not professionally um, promoted themselves? Also, financial value. A lot of companies that are traded on the stock market are based on their assets, and part of your branding and how you use it is part of that market value. Furthermore, that can also help in terms of if you want lending down the road. What, do you, what are you saying out there about your brand that says that you can support this loan? Furthermore, it inspires your employees. If your mission and your goal is succinct and it's out there and your employees understand it, they're going to embrace it and want to help you get to those end goals. Also generates new customers. How could you tell someone about the shoes that you bought if you don't remember the brand? Uh, and lastly, of course, your brand supports your advertising because you're going to keep in mind your demographic. With all that in mind about the what and the why, your brand strategy is extremely important because your brand strategy is the sum of all your parts. And it needs to be consistent uh, to make it a strong, uh, make strong brand equity. It is the how, the what, the where, the when and to whom you plan on communicating and delivering your brand messages. It's also where you advertise, and it's through your certain distribution channels, and it's what you communicate visually and verbally. I like this little stock art because they're debating on what uh, Ivan the Terrible's brand should be. So, Now on to collateral. The most important part of your brand is your logo. Um, you want to have something professionally designed that's memorable, readable, and has good visibility. So that, a lot of things go into that consideration. Um, it could be a symbol, could be a design, a sign or an emblem. Your fonts and your graphic visuals and your colors all come into play. So if you think about font choices, sometimes those that are too comic sans or scripty are not, uh, excuse me, legible when they're on all of your materials. So for example, it also tells a story. So let's take a look at the two examples up on the screen. What is Big Al's Harley Davidson Riding Club telling you with their font? Who wants to take a guess? Fun. Fun, okay. What else? Whimsical. <laughs> Whimsical. Whimsical, all right. It's not a pub. Exactly. <laughs> you going to go to Big Al and buy your Harley? Oh, yeah. Nah. <laughs> Maybe if you want it in pink or something like that. But exactly, it's, it's telling a story. Uh, flip side, look at FedEx. It's, it's very recognizable. They have big, bold letters. They took their name and made it short. Hey, I'm going to use FedEx. But furthermore, there is a symbol in the FedEx logo. And I don't know if anyone is aware of that. But if you are, who can share what it is? Nick. Right there. Never Woo! So what story does the arrow tell you? Moving. Get you places. From A, A to Z. Exactly. So that's why your logo is extremely important and you want to use it everywhere across all your brand strategy and your campaign. Um, because I am part of the tech committee, I'm going to put my techie hat on for a minute and share with you a little bit of a, what I'm going to call a tech alert. 
Your professional logo should be done in a, in a vector format, which makes it scalable. And that can be done through a, a software program called Illustrator. If it's done in Illustrator, you're going to render it out in vector, and those are the file formats that you would be asking for from your graphic designer. AI, EPS, SVG, and PDF. Can also be done in Photoshop. Again, high resolution, and if it's in Photoshop, you want it re you're going to render it out into a JPEG, a PNG, or a TIFF. And that way it'll have the visibility and the clarity it needs to go across all of your branding items. Moving on from your logo. Some more collateral is your promotional material, your tangible item. Your branding should be across every single one of those. So, so some examples are your business card, letterhead, cell sheets, brochures, um, PowerPoint presentation, hello. Uh -huh. Tchotchkes, those things you give away like the squeezy balls and keychains and what have you, and of course magazines. In this particular example, this is the Turn 2 Foundation who happens to be one of our clients. It's Derek Jeter's nonprofit, and we were tasked to make sure their branding was across all of their collateral materials. So let me ask anyone in the room, why is it extremely important to have your brand across a tangible item? Consistency, what else? Durability. Excellent durability. Constant recognition. Bingo, right? Someone has a meeting with you and they walk away with a tangible item and your company is all over that tangible item, they're going to see it later and remember it. It's going to possibly be on their desk. Someone else can see it. Same thing with a tchotchke item. You're drinking out of a coffee mug. Well, there's a name on that coffee mug. Techie alert for promotional material. Items that are printed also need to be in high resolution so it doesn't look blurry or fuzzy and all your graphics are nice and sharp and crisp. So your high resolution print formats would be a PDF with the crop marks and bleeds with all the vector formats we talked about incorporated into that item. Also part of your collateral is your online material. So you have your tangible items, your walkaways for people, <clears throat> and then your online presence. So your branding should also be across your website, your social media pages, so your Facebook, your LinkedIn, YouTube, et cetera, and banner ads. Uh, just an example of what our company does, you'll see our branding is consistent across those online platforms. And likewise to the tangible item, it's recognizable right away. Your online presence is just as important. A little techie alert for you all in the room. Um, your images that you put into some of your social media, even your website, the resolution is very important. You don't want a, a low res file um, with your photos or graphics and similar to what we talked about with the logo already. So here's an example of on Facebook, your cover photo dimensions should be 851 pixels wide by 315 pixels tall. How did I find that out? The hard way? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. This picture looks like junk. How do I make it look better? That's, that's part of it. Right click on the picture and look at properties. Yes. You can look at the properties of a picture by right clicking on it. Absolutely. And to find out the dimensions that have to go into some of these platforms is a simple keyword search. So once you're in there, what, what pixel size should my cover photo be? What pixel size should my banner art be? and then you work from there. That's pretty much it for collateral. Um, like uh, Nicole said, we'll have questions at the end, so I'd be happy to answer anything that might have come up during this topic. And right now, I will pass the baton to Nick. That's great, that was great. Thank you. Oh, you don't need it, do you? No, I don't. Do you have a title slide? I have no slide. Yeah. Well, maybe I do. Do I? Yes, there I do. There you are. For those, for those that know me know that I, I like to speak. So I won't have as many visuals here, the, the, nor does my topic really need it. Um, I want to talk to you about domains and branding. Um, I'm going to take a little poll, a little survey here. How many people do in your business 25 emails a day, if you could raise your hand? And how many, if you do 50 emails a day, raise your hand? And is there anyone that does 100 emails a day? Very busy man over there. Okay, very busy man. Um, email is probably one of the most uh, uh, utilized sources of getting your brand out there. 
Um, so it's important when you're sending out email, as Heather pointed out, in your signature, you want your logo and any references to social medias to get there to keep it all consistent across the board. But also you want to look at your domain. Now this, a lot of times what people do when they're in business is they want to use Gmail as a case in point. So they'll have their business, for example, it might say cupcakes for you at gmail.com. Um, or it might say cupcakes for you at hotmail.com. This is something you don't want to do for a number of reasons. First of all, although the name of your business is in the body of the email, going back to what Heather was referencing, there's a credibility issue in this respect in terms of is this a, is this a real business? How many people here have gotten emails from friends that have Hotmail accounts, Yahoo accounts, Gmail accounts, OptOnline accounts, etc., where don't open that email, I've been hacked. That is a, uh, you know, AOL account, that is a frequent situation that can happen. So you want to be able to get a domain name for your business, and your domain name wants to reflect that brand so that it establishes credibility. If you have an actual domain name, truebamboo.com, Technically, I could be working out of my car, but to the perception of, of the people I'm approaching, it looks like an established business. So it also is more secure. You usually will have more secure fire, uh, firewalls in place on the servers that are hosting your domains than you would on some of these uh, other type of servers like Gmail, etc. So it gives you more credibility on that. So every time you send an email, it has your domain, which is your, your company, it has your signature, so it's consistently being put forth to your clients on a regular basis, subliminally. For those that might go back to my time, uh, in, the, in the 1960s, it might have even been before that, uh, the movie industry, when they would show movies at the theater, and you were at the theater, there would be these subliminal, like, go get popcorn, go get Coke, go get, and, and you didn't even, re your brain recognized it, but you didn't visually recognize it. Um, of course, they don't do that anymore, we think. But um, that being said, it's a very similar type of an approach with email. Because when you combine that with your collateral material, your online presence, your constant communications, it's a constant way to visualize the name of that company and put that in that person's brain so that they remember it and retain it. So it's real important. Now, sometimes when you're getting a domain, uh, and, and again, most of you, I, I assume, have them. Um, but sometimes when you're getting a domain, you'll have situations where the domain you want to identify your business may not be available. Uh, as an example, I had a, a particular client. Uh, they were looking to get their company's domain name. Um, the dot-com was taken, and the person would sell it to them for over $2,000. This was a startup business. They could not afford $2,000. So I said, all right, well, get the dot-net, because quite frankly, dot-net today is just as effective as .com. But if you're searching for a domain name and the .com is available, it is strongly advised to get the .net as well. Because if you have success with the .com domain name, a .net being just as effective, you don't want somebody getting that and riding on the success of your domain. You know, you don't have to go crazy with .infos, .co's, .uk's. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily suggest that. And of course, if a .org is applicable to your business, uh, or .edu, obviously grab those as well. Um, they're very inexpensive for a cost of 10 to 15, 20 dollars a year. You know, you can uh, have those domains and, and you know, uh, keep them for your, for your business. When you are trying to get a domain, for example, let's say I had a client, their company, uh, they wanted clearly LED. It was not available. So he's like, well, what do I do? I said, all right, well, let's play with it. Let's look at clearly LED USA or clearly LED and J.com. As a matter of fact, a, a group that Jose and I are a part of, uh, when we went to search for a domain name, it, it, well, they had a domain name, it was bpnllc.com. We wanted to change that up, uh, so what we did was we, bpn.com was not available. So what we did, because it's a New Jersey uh, based networking group, we got bpnnj.com. And so that was a way you could play, you could do things with numbers and letters where instead of you could use for you, it, it depending on your business. So there's a lot of things you can do to get creative, to keep in line with your domain, and continue, can you continually to put that out there. As I said, it's a, my area of what I'm talking about today was 
pretty concise and pretty simple and surprisingly I'm under the 15 minute allotment uh, especially coming from me so uh, with that I'm going to turn it over to Nina who is the uh, co-chair of the uh, tech committee and thank you very much. Where am I going? I'll go this way. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. So we've spoken about uh, collateral and now domain. So at this point, you kind of have an idea of all of the pieces. And I'm going to be talking about campaigns, how you use these pieces to uh, achieve business goals. So what are campaigns? Campaigns are marketing efforts to achieve a goal of your business. And technology can help you develop, define, and deliver your marketing and branding campaigns to the demographic and market that you want to reach. And I'll say it again, it can't be said enough. Consistency is key regardless of medium. I know Heather brought that up, but it is it needs to be said every single time by every single one of us. You have to be consistent because that's what creates the network of people to identify your brand, your company, your service. So what are campaign goals? Here's a few different types of goals for a campaign just as examples. So obtaining new business. This would be uh, a campaign to open a new market, advertise to a new demographic, highlight a new product or service. Uh, customer loyalty. So you would do a campaign to the clients you already serve or customers you already serve to get them to buy more often, more frequently, or refer you. Name recognition, this is really, when people see your name and your logo, do they know what you do? Do they know the service you provide? Do they understand how you can help them or provide something for them? This is part of the name recognition campaign. And then research, this one's really varied type of campaign, but you can research your clients, you can research your vendors, you can research how they feel about you, how they feel about your product. Uh, how they feel about competitors. Research your competitors. What are they doing? How are they doing it? These are all different types of campaigns. So this is what types of technology you can use to implement the campaigns that we just spoke about. So there's email newsletters and blasts. So I'm sure you probably know about Constant Contact, MailChimp. You can also I know the Meadowlands Chamber does email blasts that you guys can call them up and say, hey, we'd like to be a part of this, and they can help you get in on that as well. So you have a lot of options. Really look at what's available. When you know what you want to do, then it's easy to choose how to do it. Surveys, there's SurveyMonkey. That goes along with the research campaign. Also, social media. This is, as everybody knows, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram. There's so much more, Pinterest, Peach, Periscope. There's just a million things there. You need to know the most important thing about this when you're doing a campaign on social media. Is that where your audience is? And do you have the message that's going to draw them in or be able to be shared? Blogs, you can write information for your own company. You can write guest blogs for other people who maybe are vendors of yours or share a similar market so that you can use their network to get your campaign out. Videos, these can be educational or advertising. Loyalty programs, um, two of the ones that I know of would be Belly or Spot On. These are the little tiny cards that you get and you get information about your customers, what they're purchasing, when, where they are, their demographic. And then customer relationship management software, I just put it in here because it ties everything together, but I know Alana is going to talk more about that. And the purpose of all of these is to create the network, consistent network. So no matter where they are reaching you from, they all get the same message, same brand. It's all cohesive. So how you can harness technology in your campaigns a little bit more specific. Keeping tabs on your competitors. You need to know things like what are they doing? How are they doing? Who are they advertising to? How can you do it better, what they're doing? How can you do it different? How can you take what they're doing and make it work for you? Defining your goals and metrics. You need to know what your goals are, and then you need to know what aspects of your business affect that bottom line. So if you're, at, if you're looking to 
get more clients. And that's why you're running a campaign. Then your metrics are going to be something like, are we making more money? Are more people coming in the store? Are more people calling us? Do we have more foot traffic? You probably know, I'm sure that you do, better than anybody else, what types of things will affect your goal, and those are the things that you need to monitor. So Google Analytics are very good for monitoring things like traffic to your website, how your search engine optimization is going, are you moving up the list? Things like who's visiting your site, how they're searching you, things like that. Social media insights are very good to know who's viewing you, how they're viewing you, when are they seeing you? How are they engaging? Are they resharing, re retweeting? Are they telling your friends about it? Are they telling their friends about it? And then the CRM software is really everything else about your customer and your vendors. You can find out everything about them, and then that way you can campaign to them much more specifically. And CRM allows you to do things like, okay, this very specific demographic at this location, we're going to advertise to them. So that helps with that type of campaign. And I'll take questions at the end when Alana's done speaking. All right. Hello, how are you? I hope everybody's uh, having fun today. Um, I'm gonna talk about some software uh, and applications that can be used um, pretty much in any point of business, and a lot of it ties into what everybody else has shared. This is kind of like the follow-up to all of that. All right, so CRM. I'm sure a lot of you already use a CRM uh, or of some sort. What is important about CRM is that it is your customer relationship manager. It can track everything from um, you know, your sales, what your customer wants and needs are, your pipeline, all of these things, and it's super important. Um, right now, Microsoft Dynamics has a newer version, which is Azure or cloud-based, and because of that, we have improved service. We have those familiar tools, so anybody who has used the Microsoft Dynamics CRM, those tools are still there, they're still the same. We also have um, complete and consistent view of the customers across the board. You can now customize your views in such a way so that that way you can actually pinpoint your areas of opportunity. And you can uh, increase your sales team productivity and focus to boost those sales. So again, you can actually pinpoint on specific areas with your, with your clients as to what do I need to do to, to keep them happy or what, are, what else are they looking for? Are there any other needs? Um, CRM has really grown into that, and again, you can actually access this across platforms. So whether you're using a Google platform, an Apple platform, or even a Windows platform, because it's Azure-based, you can um, use your iPhone to actually update and check your CRM. All right, this is something that's a little newer. Um, has anybody heard of Microsoft Power BI? Besides Nick? <laughs> All right, so this is a little bit new. This actually is in conjunction with Office 365 enterprise um, level software. So if you are on that, I definitely encourage those to um, either try it out. You can download it as a separate entity. So if you are interested, there is a great free trial going on, or you can actually have it integrated with your Office 365 enterprise account. And what it does is it takes your data and it tells a story. So you can actually use simplified language now. So you can actually query it via question, like <coughs> what is the Northeast market doing in sales? You can literally put that in very, very simple English and it will actually bring up everything pertinent to that area. You can track everything in live time. All of these charts here are completely customizable and you can actually draw those in from as simple as an Excel spreadsheet. So it'll actually allow you to customize the type of chart, the type of data that you want to see. And again, you can even pinpoint. So if you wanted to look at a specific country area here, you can actually click in there and it will expand even further for you to pinpoint where your areas of opportunity are or maybe you need more engagement or less engagement in those areas. All right, and Office Delve is also a new addition to the Office 365 Enterprise Agreements. Um, Office Delve is pretty cool because what it does is it actually acts as a mini project manager. So anybody within your organization, you can kind of see across the board what they're working on. Um, if it, it does go by security groups. So for example, if you're the CEO of a company and you're only s talking to maybe a couple of people, if you share information with them, only those people can view. It wouldn't be your whole organization viewing everything. Um, again, you can actually see 
you know, coincidences. So maybe you didn't realize that somebody else is on your team and you want to work with them, you want to collaborate with them. You'll be able to view what they're working on and maybe you can even piggyback off of what they're working on. You can discover new connections and you can connect with the right people at the right time by grouping people. You can even use this, again, as a project manager. So if you wanted to set tasks for a specific team, you can actually use Office Delve to do that in a very specific way, in a very simple way. And again, this is also available across platform. And Skype for Business. So um, we used to have Link, which is now turned into the Skype for Business. Uh, Skype for Business is great because you can um, use a PC, you could use a phone, you can use pretty much anything to connect and present across um, pretty much anywhere. So um, you can allow and enable permissions. So if I'm doing a presentation, but then Nick has to do the other half, one simple click and I can actually allow him to take over the entire presentation. You can record a presentation or a webinar this way as well. You could do this via laptop, desktop, tablet, or phone. There's even dial-in, so maybe you don't have Skype for Business, but if you send out that invitation, there will actually be a dial-in phone number and you can just use a cell phone and call. So you could still be a part of the meeting in some way. And again, you can use this pretty much anywhere you have Wi-Fi or an internet connection. Um, it's pretty much limitless. So. Great question. Um, depends on your audience. Um, so back to that tangible item, what's walking out of the room? Uh, I'm, I still think that it's very important to get your brand and messaging out there. Um, and we do still have clients requesting it. But I also, again, would take your audience into consideration. Who's your demographic? Are they the people that throw away paper or recycle it uh, and only go online? Or do they like that tangible item? Um, if you look at, here's a good example. Go into any bank. What do you see? Brochure, brochure, brochure. But you also see advertising for their online capabilities. So both mediums work very well if you have a mixed audience, such as a bank would. Did that answer your question? Yes. You're welcome. I do find, just to, to piggyback on, I do find sometimes now with the mail even, um, because for a while you got, you know, you were just getting flooded with, with mail <laughs> items. It kind of died down. So now when I get one, I'm excited it's not a bill and it stands out a little bit more. So that's something to also consider is when you're watching the ebb and flow, what can make you a little bit different from the competition and those traditional marketing values might come into play. First off, excellent uh, fashion week. That must have been so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> excellent. Very cool. So blogging is very important in terms of, I would say, 
helping you with an online audience because of several reasons. Number one, if you think about keyword searching out on the internet, when you type in, a, a, I'm looking for bagels or something, that's going to filter into what you know the SEO. So that word bagel, wherever it's indicated out on an online presence, is going to track back up. So in a blog, a blog is words. So words and content are extremely important when you're developing online an online presence such as a blog. So that's number one. And there are very easy platforms out there to get started, uh, such as WordPress has a great one. It's very uh, user friendly and intuitive. So that could be an area where you build your actual blog platform. But most importantly, if you're writing something and no one's reading it, what's the point? So back to what Nina mentioned earlier with campaigns, mm -hmm. you want to get a subscriber list. So you need to capture those emails, probably through a client relationship manager like Alana mentioned, mm -hmm. email blast through Constant Contact, and drive them to the blog. I would also say interaction on a blog is important because if someone has a voice about your blog and can comment on it and share something else, you're then creating an audience dialogue. Does that make sense in terms of some of the key aspects of, yeah, of making it successful? so many of them. There are. But mm -hmm. yet, there are ones that are very, very successful. Yeah. And there are ones that are just there. So if you're going to do this, you certainly want to be on the top end. Absolutely, and part of that is research, right? You, back to that brand campaign and strategy. This Step number one, you just asked a great question that's part of research. You want to look at those successful blogs. What's making them successful? When you click on an email from somebody that's asking you to go to their blog, why are you doing it? What is that interest point that's making you take that step? And that's some, again, content development, because maybe there was a word or two, it's a, or it's a timely topic that's going to help you with something. So that's back to the writing, which it sounds like if, if you're selected to write it, you already have that capability, which is great. You just need the technology to match it. I, I would also add, make sure you front load with plenty of articles. Don't blast out to everybody if you just have a single blog. Make sure you have a few things, topics of interest, so once people are there and you actually got them there, that there's a little something else for them to do or more to read something like that, make sure you have a call to action. Once they're reading the blog, what else do you want them to do? Is that the end game? Or is reading the blog uh, an attempt to get them to do something else? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and on those lines, um, the same can be said for other social media aspects. When people create a Facebook business page, you don't want to have like three or four posts and invite all your friends because they'll come, they'll see three or four posts and go, oh, that, that's great. And then they may not come back, but if they see um, you know, lots of posts and information that's interesting uh, that's going to make them want, because first of all, they're not going to digest it or read it all at the same time, but they'll say, oh, there's more stuff, it's good stuff, I want to come back. Um, with a blog, using the Meadowlands as, a, as, a, as an example, um, Meadowlands USA, uh, which it still is the, uh, the Flash magazine is still there, correct? Uh, that's how, the Meadowlands USA used to be on the Meadowlands website, well, still is, as a Flash uh, item, which it's like those, uh, for those that may not know what that is, you would go to Staples and it would say like, turn the page and it would go like this. That's all graphical and it has, it does nothing for the optimization of your website at all because it, the, the, the things that pull when there's a Google searching, um, it, 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 it can't read that. So as a result, they then developed a blog page to coordinate to take advantage of those optimization uh, that uh, that it would provide, so you know that that it, it's a very good benefit. And again, going back to branding, what you're saying, consistency. Just not to beat a dead horse, but that is so important because people will count on that when they come back and, and visit it. And yeah, and even to like just to add to that, picking the correct social media to tie into that blog as well. So for example, um, if you were going to tie it to a Tumblr, Tumblr is mostly teenagers. They may not be reading high-end fashion. So also, you know, doing your research and seeing what demographic of peoples are using specific social media. So Pinterest seems to be a little bit more of that like 25 to like 45, 50 range. They're the ones that are going to take that, that high-end fashion and want to learn more about it. So picking and choosing the connecting points for that blog would also be a good suggestion as well. Because uh, 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 I just wanted to add one more point when, you, when you're done. Just that, just coming off of fashion week, what was really big this season, 
What's Periscope? Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. Yep. That links to Twitter. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So that would be great. Did you did you practice? Did you sign in and try it, Periscope? No, I have not. Okay. I really I was watching everybody do it. Sure. And I, and I had to. I was yeah. forced, but I didn't quite comprehend it. Yeah. But it was everybody was on Periscope. Just so the audience is aware, Periscope is a platform that's de it's actually developed on the Twitter platform, but it's video. So you live can take streaming. it and do live streaming video, but people can actually chime in to, and watch with you and comment. So if you kind of get you get your Twitter followers to, to get in on and they comment on the video that you're sharing. So at Fashion Week, I can see that totally That's being huge. all over the place. Yeah. yeah. You know, another thing, uh, another point on blogging, uh, I have a client there, a public relations firm, um, big into blogging. They got to the point where there was such an interest in their blogs, they were able to turn it around because of all the people that subscribe to it and monetize it. Mm. Where they turned it from a free uh, service to where if you want to get our information, you, you have to pay a subscription. Yeah. So it, it is something that could be looked at depending on you know, how much you want to do with it and the, and the uh, content that can be monetized for your business. Right, so yep. subscriber and advertisers too. Mm -hmm. So Correct. if you're talking about a product, especially with Fashion Week's a great example, there's a, a jeweler that wants to place an ad now on your blog that, li that links out to one of their you know, jewelry online stores. That's another way to monetize. Yes, and with blogs, you can also tag them or give them categories so that people can search by, okay, I love fashion, but what I really love about fashion is shoes. So all the articles that are about shoes would have that tag on them, and then there'd be a like sidebar menu. You can click on shoes. It'll tell you how many articles are there, and then all the articles about shoes come up so that they're linked that way. You can also link them internally as well, like you were mentioning, yes. More links, the better. Keep them there longer, reading more, wanting more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. We have a question over here. Now, my name is Bob Donnelly. I just want to share something that I do that might be helpful to everybody. I have a couple of blogs, and uh, basically what happens with them is they go out to the folks that are on my network, but the value of them is if you look down at the bottom, you have all these icons, right, mm -hmm. that no one seems to recognize for some strange reason. Okay? So the first icon is your Twitter followers, right? So you can click on your Twitter followers and they get the blog and then they can retweet it, okay? But most importantly, you can then click on LinkedIn, okay? There's a LinkedIn little icon that no one seems to use. I don't know why, but they don't, okay? And what that means is you can then send it to all of the LinkedIn groups that you want to, all right? In addition to that, you can send it to individuals because there's two boxes down there. One is to individual and one is to groups, okay? And then there's a whole pile of other icons there that you can click on and have it forwarded. So to me, uh, <laughs> I can't think of a better, word, a better way to get the word out, right? Because you're actually now reaching thousands of people, all right? And that's, that's what business is all about, isn't it? It's a numbers game, pure and simple. Okay? So I hope that's helpful. I don't know. Absolutely. start that one sure um, they do work <clears throat> but one of the traps that I've seen people I know fall into if your website is not constructed properly what will happen is you will be paying to get that advertising to draw to your site the minute that is done being paid for you disappear mm -hmm. so what you know, with search engine optimization, it basically comes down to this. You have to have the foundation of your site built properly, structurally, um, and then those type of campaigns is to get that jump start 
So when it goes there and draws the traffic, it is going to mean something. As an example, a friend of mine had a website. They did window treatments. They're in Bergen County. They had where it would be like wooden shades, Franklin Lakes. Etc. So there was, there was, but all of that was in a graphic. So if anybody wanted to say, I'm looking for someone with wooden shades in Northern Bergen County or Franklin Lakes or whatever, that it wasn't visible because it was constructed poorly. They paid over $2,500 a month in various campaigns. The minute that budget ran out, they were gone. So basically, it wasn't, the, it was the sponsored stuff that were being covered, not their own what's called organic optimization, and that's helped through those processes. And if anybody else has anything to add on it? Um, my only comment would be know where your audience goes so that you're advertising in the right location and don't put all your eggs in one basket. <laughs>